everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be focusing on a pretty awesome topic today, which is really looking at LM Studio, which is one of the more popular implementations of a GUI that enables you to download and install and to start to chat with open source large language models and how you integrate LM Studio into LLMware. Uh, what you can see, um, for those who have not seen LM Studio, this is actually an LM Studio screen. It looks awesome. It gives you great dashboards, great search, really nice capabilities in terms of how you start interfacing with and discovering, you know, open source language models. One of the things that we see a lot is, you know, somebody downloads LM Studio and it is an executable. You download it just like any other application, you fire it up, immediately gives you this beautiful kind of graphical environment. But one of the things that we've been getting a lot of questions about is, okay, now that I've done this, now that I've started to experiment with this, I see that some of these models can work on a local environment. How do I start connecting them programmatically and start doing some retrieval augmented generation and start building some more complex workflows around it? Well, that's where LLMware comes in. So what we're gonna show you today is a very, very simple recipe. We're gonna show you how do you integrate this beautiful GUI with a great discovery tool. It's a great way to experiment. How do we seamlessly start to connect this into code that you can write in LLMware. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use a feature of LLM Studio, which is to fire up a local inference server. To do that is really simple. You actually load one of the models that you've downloaded. In this case, we're gonna use one of our favorite models, uh, the Llama 2 Chat. This is a four bit quantized version from the bloke on Hugging Face. We're going to start this inference server. You can see the inference server now is up and running. This is running locally on our machine, simply exposing it on our local host at port 1234. You can see here a really nice way, it just shows you if you wanna run a curl command, how you would actually connect into this model. Now what we're gonna do, now that we have our local inference server running locally here on my Mac, we're gonna flip over and start to look at some code. This is one of the examples that we have in our LLMware repository. It's using open chat models. And what it actually shows you is a very, very simple way that you register that local inference server. You register it as a model in the LLMware model catalog. And then you can use it in a first tier way, the same way that you would any other model, whether it was GPT-4, whether it was a PyTorch model, um, whether it was a custom model that you developed or anything in between. So here's the code. It could not be more straightforward. Essentially, it comes down to this one line right here. We're gonna go to our model catalog. We're gonna register an open chat model. And there are a few key parameters that we need to provide. The first is a custom name. We could name it anything we want. One of the benefits of having multiple names is theoretically you could have multiple open chat APIs, each of which could be named and each of which you could be calling in more complex orchestration. So custom name. The second thing then, which is really the single most important is actually that, that curl command, what we're actually going to be connecting to. And in this case, the way that the open chat API works, we're actually gonna be using this API base passing it into an OpenAI compatible API, but it's gonna be calling this endpoint. So that, that's actually the single most important thing is to make sure that we find and connect to our LM Studio instance. This is the default parameter. So if you don't change anything on LM Studio, you don't have to change anything here. It is gonna find it at that local host. The next thing is actually something really important, which is the prompt wrapper. Different fine tunings have um, different wrappers, usually something at the very beginning and something at the very end. These become very important tokens in terms of simulating that kind of dialogue in the way that a particular model was fine tuned. In this case, it's really easy and really straightforward. We're using a Llama 2 model, which kind of uses this famous inst uh, prompt wrapper at the beginning and at the end of a prompt. What we provide out of the box, and we'll highlight that in another video, is we support you know, half a dozen of the out of the box kind of common prompt wrappers. We also give you the capabilities to very quickly create your own prompt wrapper template for your own custom model. And then finally, what type of model type do you want? In almost all cases, it's going to be using the chat API, but we do support the completion API as well. So once you register your model with that one line of code, it's gonna be added into the model catalog. So what you might wanna do, you might wanna just check it. Always a good idea, better safe than sorry, just to verify that nothing went wrong in the process, just to confirm that the model card has been identified. Once it has then, it's like any other model. You can invoke it then, using kind of the standard machinery inside LLMware, simply load the model, you load the model by name, and then all of the configuration and implementation details are handled behind the scenes. So you can load your model. What we're gonna do is we run through a quick script. We're gonna connect to it. We're gonna do a quick prompt, just a very uh, hello world. You know, what is the future of AI? We're gonna get a response back. And then just to make it a little bit more interesting, we're gonna run through three 
Uh, reasonable questions, three questions that we use a lot to test some you know, 7 billion parameter chat models. Just some open-ended kind of topics help us to sort of frame and think out a particular issue. And we're just going to run through three prompts and iterate through them. So that's what we're going to show you in five minutes. You're going to see how you can quickly connect your LM Studio you know, models into LLMware. So with that as background, let's go ahead and let's run the script. So we can confirm the model card was found. So the registration was successful. We're now going out. The model is actually being loaded in our local memory. This can take typically 15 to 20 seconds, depending on the machine that you're running on. A lot is memory dependent. So 16 gigabyte to 32 gigabytes of RAM typically. Uh, you can see we've gotten the response back. So we completed our hello world test. You can see the uh, response back was pretty sensible. Again, we were doing this probably less to check the quality of the AI and, and just to validate that the connectivity works. But as usual, it gives us a really nice answer here in a dictionary format. And then it also adds for it some metadata about the prompt, as well as some of the usage data about the input, the output, the tokens, and the processing time. So here we are, we've moved on now into the next three prompt questions. You can see about 15 seconds for a paragraph level kind of response is typically what we see in running these models on a local machine. So hopefully this gives you a nice simple recipe of how easy it is to start to connect these models. Really, it comes down to registering the model in the catalog. And then once you've done that, you can invoke this model like any other model just using its name. Now, one other thing, just before we close out today's video, because one thing that we get questions about is, well, how does it actually work? And I wanna take you maybe behind the covers just to show you where some of these GGUF models are stored, and especially within LM Studio, just so you're aware of where some of the underlying bits are sitting. And so to do that, I'm actually gonna go in and show you the cache. So if you look at your main user path, which is typically users and your name, on most Macs, you know, Windows typically is a little similar, it might be a little different on a Linux system, you're gonna find this hidden file path called ca .cache. And this is where Hugging Face um, typically caches all of its models when it puts it locally. So you could see as an example, all the Hugging Face models. But for LM Studio, it actually puts it in right next to it. So what you can look then is you can see any of the models that you have in LM Studio. And these are actually just GGUF binaries. So this binary, you can copy and paste it. You could move it around and run it anywhere on your machine. And I just wanted to be able to show you this so you could see perhaps where some of the magic is happening and the fact that a lot of these assets are quite portable. You can easily move things into an LM Studio. If you wanna bring this into a programmatic environment, perhaps copy and paste it, move it into another file path. It's something that's pretty easy to do. So we hope that's helpful, gives you a really useful recipe. We are gonna have in some upcoming videos, we're gonna be talking more about custom GGF models and how you can bring them into LLMware. We're also gonna be running through a very similar example like this for Olama. Ultimately, what we're trying to do with LLMware is make it incredibly easy to connect with GGUF models wherever you happen to be using and consuming them because we really believe it's a game-changing technology in terms of unlocking all kinds of new use cases for private cloud deployments, for laptop-based deployments, and for CPU-based deployments of large language models. So thank you for tuning in today. We hope you've enjoyed today's video and uh, hope everybody has a great day. Thanks, everyone.